Hey y'all, hope you're having a good day. I'm uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot of driving the next few days, so I figured while I'm by myself for hours at a time in this Jeep, I ought to uh, do what I've been meaning to for a while and make some videos, you know, to let you guys know not just the songs that I write and the songs that I cover and stuff like that, but like, you know, be along for the adventure, so to speak. So, um, figured I should make kind of a bio video, you know, so if anybody's interested, you can uh, check it out on YouTube and kind of learn, like, why I do what I do and where I got started and all that stuff. So, um, I'm actually a little bit north of Farmville right now, Farmville, Louisiana, and um, that's basically where, right out here, out in the sticks, is basically where I started playing acoustic, you know, just solo, um, writing songs and playing for buddies around a campfire, but uh, really I got started way before that. Um, my grandparents were the Ramsey family. They were a bluegrass gospel band that used to tour with uh, with the Sullivan family, Margie and Enoch Sullivan, and they actually wound up playing a lot of gigs with Bill Monroe, who if you don't know is the grandfather of bluegrass. Uh, Bill Monroe and his bluegrass boys, you know, I mean, Jimmy Martin, you know, all the major guys. And it's really cool because they told me a story uh, after a few years after I started playing the fiddle. Um, they told me a story that whenever I was a baby, they were playing the Ryman Auditorium, opening up for Margie and Enoch and for Bill Monroe, and that Bill was holding me as a one-year-old in the back of the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. Um, and him and Enoch were arguing because Bill was saying that I was going to be one of his bluegrass boys. And Enoch was saying, no, he's going to be my little fiddle player, you know, and they both kept going back and forth. And Mama told me after I started playing fiddle, she's like, man, I guess Enoch cursed you. And uh, I was like, what do you mean, Mom? And um, she said, Enoch said you were going to be a fiddle player. And by the time I was eight years old, I was a fiddle player. So uh, it's, it really started a little bit before then, even though I, I remember hearing Tim McGraw, I like it, I love it at six years old riding down Snyder Lane in Lake Providence in the back of mom's car and at six years old I remember thinking oh man that's really cool this guy wrote this story about meeting this girl and how he likes her and then he's taking her out and trying to win her over and I wanted I knew then I wanted to be a songwriter so it's been music nothing but ever you know for my whole life um, so when I was eight I started playing fiddle with my grandparents and I got to play with Margie and Enoch. Uh, I didn't get to, to meet Bill, uh, unfortunately. He wound up passing away about a year and a half after I started really playing with Memo and Papa. But uh, I did get to play with Margie and Enoch a lot, and, and Jerry and Tammy Sullivan as well. Um, so that's really, really special. I didn't even realize how special it was as a kid. But, um, and I got to play music with my, my grandma and my grandpa and my great uncle and I got to learn how to be in a band from my grandparents, you know, so that's, that was really cool. But uh, eventually, uh, cancer wound up taking my grandpa back in 2000, and uh, I think I was 11, and I just couldn't stand to play the fiddle anymore, it just reminded me too much of him, and I'd been writing these songs, and uh, this lady that went to church with me, um, she told me, she was like, hey, look, if, if you're gonna be a songwriter, she was a songwriter, she said, if you're going to be a songwriter, you either need to learn how to play the guitar or the piano. And uh, I, I, I went with the guitar. So I started trying to learn my own chords and stuff like that. And eventually started playing uh, at church a little bit, and church bands and stuff like that. But really, when it started, I, I started really, really writing at about 14. Uh, some of the songs that I play still to this day, I wrote when I was 14 years old. Um, so my audience was my peers in high school. And on the weekends, a lot of these guys would have a campfire and we'd all sit around the campfire and I'd pick guitar and I was the guitar guy at the party, you know, for years. And uh, it's not really a cool guy to be. It, it looks like it at first. And fortunately, my friends actually cared enough to listen to my songs and I wasn't trying to play Wonderwall and get girls or whatever. But eventually, I was the guy trying to play Wonderwall and get girls, and it's not, you're not, man, it's, you're not a cool guy when you're trying to be that guy. But anyway, 
So I started gigging at 16, really, really gigging at 16. My first real set was at Sundown Tavern in Ruston, uh, which is a bar, a bar and grill kind of place, you know, but it was for John Semino fundraiser um, back in 2004, I think. And then the next few months, I started playing Tuesday nights at this little place called Bennigan's in West Monroe. And uh, local legend Johnny O'Neill played there on Thursday nights. And he was the first guy around to start using a loop pedal. And if you've seen me live, I use a loop pedal a lot. Um, so he was a really big inspiration to me. He was one of the really, really the nicest guys I've ever met. And uh, so talented, played with some of the biggest names around. Um, Brent and Curry played fiddle with him. He actually used to play for Jerry and Tammy Sullivan also and wound up going to Nashville at like 17 to play with Alan Jackson and Rascal Flatts and all these major names. So, um, But Johnny O'Neill and Monty Russell both were really, really helpful to me when I was young, when I was trying to get started, you know, and, and all that good stuff. And my dad would drop me off at gigs because I was too young to drive, didn't have a license or a car or anything like that. And I've just been grinding it out since. And for the longest time, I had a day job during all this, um, up until five years ago, five and a half years ago now. Um, March 10th of 2015, I had to have brain surgery. I had uh, I was born with Chiari malformation, where part of my brain would go down into my spine and constrict my spinal cord from being able to move the way it's supposed to be. So it, it was always a concern that I was either gonna wind up getting hit wrong or move wrong or whatever and, and sever either my tonsillar lobe, which would kill me, or my spinal cord, which would paralyze me. So uh, five years ago, I had the surgery to correct it. And uh, it was pretty extensive. They actually had to go in and repair my spinal cord and they had to take the back off of the top three vertebrae back here. And, and so, they told me straight up, look, you're not going to be working in a fab shop wearing a hard hat anymore, okay? You need to uh, go to the Social Security office and you're going to be on disability. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't see myself doing that, man. I, um, I hurt for a year and a half, but I didn't hurt bad enough to be on disability. And I've got my guitar, you know? So I'd already been developing this, and really it worked to my favor because I never could just be a musician because I felt like if I've got the capability to work my butt off and provide for my family that's what I need to do I've got a wife and three kids you know so um, my parents raised us to work hard and go get it you know and not be a victim so that's what I did and six months after that surgery my wife and I got to open up for Three Doors Down and Dwight Yoakam, uh, thanks to Whiskey Myers. They, uh, we, we got to open up for those guys one time, and they spoke really highly of us to this promoter, and, uh, and I got a phone call, so thanks Whiskey Myers again. But um, we got a lot of gigs through because of those guys also, a lot more than just those two, two names, so I'm really, really appreciative. Um, but I bought a lightweight PA system, I took one guitar, microphone, just what I could carry, and the first year and a half, it sucked, man. It really did. I'd play these gigs, and I'd have if I sang for more than three, three and a half hours, I'd get a migraine, and it's I would have to lay in bed all day the next day. But eventually, uh, thanks to my wife giving me awesome vitamins and some friends of mine suggesting uh, that I start doing yoga.
hit me up. Thanks, guys.